Hey guys, it's Sasha. The latest US inflation data came in this morning and it is a complete scam. Now, I don't throw words around lightly. And in fact, it's not just one scam, it's really three separate scams in this inflation data. And I will explain why inflation in the US is a scam, who is running the scam, why they're running the scam, although I think you might already know the answer to that last question. And let's talk about what's actually happening in the US economy underneath the surface. First up, let's look at the data. US inflation was at 3.5% year on year in March, which is higher than the 3.2% inflation in February. And it's the highest annual figure since September last year. Of course, the stock market is panicking. Inflation is back. Everything is the worst. The media is panicking because unfortunately, it seems that most people in the media can't actually read. Or, you know, panic is just good for media business. Inflation worse than expected in March. Again, Again, says Forbes, and Dow futures dropped 400 points after a hotter than expected inflation report. It all sounds really bad, right? Must be some really awful data in that report. Let's go and have a look. Here is the overall table. You can see that inflation is sitting at 3.5% with a 0.4% month on month increase. But let's look at what's actually driving, what's causing that increase. It's not food. Food is at 0.1% month on month and 2.2% year on year, pretty much bang on that 2% inflation target. At the peak of inflation, food was the runaway item that was far higher than everything else. Then look at energy. Oil price went up towards the end of March, so naturally gasoline went up 1.7% because the price of the pump goes up immediately when oil price increases, but then takes months to come back down when oil price goes back down. Funny, right? But the bigger problem is in electricity. See how electricity prices went up 0.9% in March. Again, they're up 5.0% year on year. So electricity is sitting above the average rate of inflation and it's pulling it up. And it has been going up consistently over the last few years. Surprisingly, electricity itself is a relatively small part of overall inflation. It's just 2.5% of the total. But electricity is an indirect contributor to pretty much everything else. Energy is needed to produce your food, to deliver your food, shops use electricity, hospitals use electricity. So the real impact of electricity prices within inflation is a lot higher. But this is the first huge fuck off scam within this inflation data. It's not the data itself. The data is accurate. Energy bills are going up and they have become ridiculously expensive. But here is the chart of energy inflation data within the CPI reports. So the index is at 100 in January 2020. And you can see that today electricity is 30% more expensive. And you can see that it's been going up quite a bit in the last few months. Here is the official data about the sources of electricity in the United States. You can see that 43% comes from natural gas, another 16% comes from coal, so that's 60% total from those two, 19% is from nuclear, and 21% is from renewables. Now, renewables are not based on commodity prices. There is no ongoing commodity price-based cost. They have an installation cost, and a maintenance cost, but there is no fossil fuel that needs to be feeding in to keep the thing going. The cost of solar panels, the cost of wind turbines has been collapsing recently. So the cost of building and maintaining renewables is actually a lot lower today than it was four years ago. So that's not contributing to electricity prices going up. So what is it? Maybe it's those fossil fuels, you know, the 60%. Well, here is the price of gas futures. Gas prices went up like a rocket when Russia invaded Ukraine, which the energy companies used to jack up their prices. But then the prices of the commodities have come right back down. Gas is now 10 to 20% cheaper right now than at the start of 2020. But electricity is 30% more expensive. So why is this? You know, what is causing electricity to be going up right now in the last few months? Is it coal? Well, here is the price of coal over the last five years. And yes, coal today is almost 80% more expensive than it was back at the start of 2020. But the price of coal has fallen really sharply in the last few months, while electricity prices at the same time are going up. There is no correlation. And the proportion of coal in the total US electricity supply is falling very quickly. It's down by about 20% in the last four years. In fact, 
Coal is down, renewables and nuclear have remained relatively consistent in the mix, and natural gas has increased as a share of total supply from 40% up to 43% of the total. So the costs behind the production of electricity are going down. The one thing that is increasing as a share of the total, that thing, natural gas, is a lot cheaper today. And at the same time, the biggest electricity provider in the United States, Duke Energy, made record profits in 2023. Interestingly, their operating income in the most recent quarter increased by 54% year on year. Do you know why? Well, the cost of natural gas for them is down 62% year on year. Other fuel is down 11% year on year. So they're not paying as much for their commodities, but your electricity bill is up, so they're raking in the cash. After rate hikes this year, Pacific Gas and Electric Company, the second biggest electricity supplier, saw a 25% increase in their profits in 2023. I think you get the point. The energy company these are raking in their cash. The bills have gone up, but the actual costs of running the business are down. Even though the energy company is saying, we had no choice. We had to increase because, you know, everything is so expensive nowadays. The regulators and the US government are obviously in cahoots with the energy companies. I don't know who's bribing who, who's rubbing whose back, but the energy companies are being allowed to profiteer at the expense of normal, regular people for no reason whatsoever at a time when US has gone through the biggest inflation spike in 40 years. So electricity prices are going up, yes. And this is adding to inflation, yes. But these prices are not going up because of some kind of problem, because of an underlying inflationary pressure. They're going up because of fraud. The energy companies are running a, an organized cartel, and the US government is choosing to ignore it. Just pretend that it's not happening. So that's scam number one for you. Let's go back to inflation data. What else is causing inflation to go up? Well, new vehicles are down 0.1% year on year, so it's not that. Used cars are down 2.2% year on year, it's not that either. But you can see that only two other numbers in this whole table are actually high. These two numbers down here, shelter and transportation services. These are scams number two and number three. Look at transportation services first. Every single fucking month, it's going up a lot. 1.5% in just the last month alone, up 10.7% year on year. And when you hear transportation services, what do you think? Oh, well, it must be, you know, the metro and the airlines and the buses and the trains and all that, right? No, that's not what it is. Well, that's a very small component of it. The main thing here is car insurance. Car insurance is up 22.2% year on year. Car insurance has a bigger weight in the inflation data than electricity. Just think about that for a second. In the last month alone, car insurance is up 2.7% in this data in one month. This is completely nuts. The media tells you that it's all because Repairing cars is more expensive. You know, these new cars, they're so difficult to repair. There's so many electronics and stuff. It costs insurance companies so much money. But here is the most recent quarterly report by Berkshire Hathaway, who just happened to own Geico, you know, one of the biggest car insurance companies in the United States. And their profit from insurance absolutely exploded in 2023. No other year comes even remotely close. And the reason was... Earnings in 2023 reflected the impacts of premium rate increases and lower claims frequencies. I think that's pretty black and white or maybe black on yellow. The insurance industry is just taking the piss because they can, posting these insane profits that they've never ever posted before while actually telling their investors that they're hiking prices while the cost of repair is down. And again, the US government is not doing anything at all about it. Even though insurance premiums are going up for no reason whatsoever other than growth profiteering. So that is another scam that is screwing US customers over. And the problem with the insurance scam and the energy bill scam is that they really are affecting people. This is not something about fake data or something like that. These really do play into inflation. These affect the ability of people to spend money on core things to just get by, to pay their bills. There is no good reason, though, for these increases other than insane corporate greed and blatant corruption. Is this a fundamental problem with the markets, though? Is there an underlying problem that needs to be addressed by the Federal Reserve? Is this 
this something that can be solved by keeping interest rates high? The answer is no. Interest rates have exactly nothing to do with this other than giving these greedy fucks one more reason to jack up their prices even more. So then we get to shelter in the inflation data, the only other number that is high. Shelter is at 5.7%. And you can see the detailed chart here from the St. Louis Fed and shelter inflation is coming down, but is coming down very slowly. Shelter is more than 36% of overall inflation, is by far the biggest factor in the overall inflation data. So if shelter is up and it's high, it's above inflation, it is pulling the whole thing up. And this is what's happening right now. Shelter in the US though is a lagging indicator because of the way that it applies to people. It's lagging the real world changes in prices. When changes to house prices, when changes to mortgages, when changes in rents happen, it doesn't mean that everyone who lives in a house suddenly has to pay more because that's not how it works. There's a big lag, right? Because people only experience a change in their rent payments when they move or when they have an annual review. People only experience a change in how much they have to pay a month for their mortgage when they remortgage, which doesn't happen all that often, or when they sell and move. So today's shelter number is really reflecting the insane increases that we saw from back in 2021, when house prices were going off the charts, rent prices went bananas and all that. Today, rent prices are flat year on year. You can see it in the Zumper report, no increase. These prices have been trending down for two years already. House prices stopped going up in a vertical line like they did back in 2020 and 2021 and are now hovering. In fact, they are kept artificially high because the distribution of houses being sold is now skewed towards more expensive properties because people living in cheaper houses can't afford to sell and buy another house. And the only reason that buying a house is more expensive now is because of the high interest rate. So we have this Mexican standoff. The Federal Reserve says that inflation is much too high. They can't possibly do anything about the rates. They've got to keep the rates high, higher for longer. High rates mean that shelter inflation is coming down way more slowly because the interest rates on mortgages are being kept artificially high. And that, that shelter number, is causing the overall inflation number to stay high artificially for a lot longer than it should. Overall inflation is staying higher as a result of this fake metric. The Fed goes and looks at overall inflation data and uses it to justify keeping the rates high. The reality is that shelter prices right now, in the real world, like right now, what's actually happening with the prices, they're at zero at best. While the inflation report is showing shelter at 5.6% year on year. Without shelter, the rest of inflation put together in total is at 2.3%. And it's only above 2% because of the huge upward pressure from energy and because of the car insurance scam. If the US government and the regulatory bodies wanted to bring down inflation, if they wanted to do something about this, it's not exactly hard. The numbers are staring you at the face. The companies are printing in their quarterly reports how much money they are making. The cartels are not even trying to hide it. But even more importantly, what goes up eventually comes back down. The insane price gouging by the energy companies and the car insurance companies can't just keep going up at 20% a year forever. Eventually there will be a straw that will break the camel's back. It's disgusting, but eventually that trend has to reverse, even if they just keep trying and pushing it as hard as they can. The reason for these increases that we're seeing is not a systemic inflationary problem. That is the really important key. The reason here is not some kind of price spiral. It's not being driven by big increases in underlying commodities and costs. It's not being driven by wages running at a ridiculous rate. If those things were the case, if that was the problem, we would have an actual inflation problem, but we do not. The Fed is busy giving speeches in the last few days about how interest rates have to stay higher for longer to combat this really sticky inflation because nobody at the Fed actually understands what the fuck it is that they're doing. They don't understand the data that they're meant to be looking at to drive their decisions. It's just not true. Inflation is not high. It is not sticky. And high rates will do nothing to stop this egregious level of profiteering. The US government needs to smack these companies in their smug faces. High rates will do nothing to make car insurance companies stop taking the fucking piss. The US regulators need to stop taking bribes 
or whatever it is that is happening because I don't have a good alternative explanation for why this is happening. They need to start doing their fucking job and stop this racket. The high interest rates are doing the opposite when it comes to shelter, the opposite of their intent. The only thing that these interest rates are actually affecting, the interest rates are doing the opposite to what the Fed thinks they're doing. They're actually causing the inflation data to look higher. They're causing inflation data to stay higher for longer because of the interest rates, because those interest rates are affecting the cost of mortgages, new mortgages. The data is unequivocal. Inflation is over in the United States. It has been over for a while and rates should have come down ages ago. But you know what? I am not part of the mass media circus. I don't get paid to repeat the same complete bullshit as everybody else. I'm just here to share the actual data, the actual analysis, instead of selling panic. The good news with inflation overall is that it's becoming a bit like a coiled spring. The real inflation number is so low now and has been so low for a while that it means whatever happens with this bubble of car insurance companies and the high energy companies, whenever that reverts, the drop in overall inflation will come seemingly out of nowhere because they're the only things holding the whole thing up. And the Fed at that point will suddenly begin cutting rates out of nowhere. It would be curiously interesting if this all magically happens, you know, as we approach the election in November, you know, out of nowhere in September, energy prices drop, car insurance prices stop going up, and suddenly inflation is back at 2%, and bang, the Fed cuts interest rates by half a percent. Now, wouldn't that be pretty useful if it happened uh, at the September FOMC meeting? 